class as opposed to uh, race. And uh, it was it looked very good to come from say worker background. Not so not as good to have um, peasant background because because. I, for some reason, com the communists assumed that um, people who had, uh, were from agrarian backgrounds had kind of these acquisitive urges that would lead them down the path to small-scale capitalism. Um, and for Jews who had been living in the Pale of Settlement, what did they do for a living? They were small-scale artisans, shoemakers, roofers, uh, s small traders. They were mo many of them were self-employed, so technically they would be considered bourgeois. In reality, they were barely scraping out a living. But when after the revolution, they all had these uh, very unattractive class backgrounds. So how did you erase your class background? Well, you know, in order for, for a young person from one of these families, and this was the stuff was stamped in your passports, or it was on your documents. You, you, it was hard to hide. I mean, this isn't like a passport in America just has your your picture and your birth date. I mean, a Russian passport is going to have how many times you were married and divorced. This is not a this is not a society that really appreciates privacy very much. Mm -hmm. Um, so they would go to uh, industrial cities and work for two or three years at a factory, and then they would be able to claim that they had worker backgrounds, and um, it made it easier for them to apply to trade schools and to colleges. And you know Jews, I mean, education, education, everybody, um, the families were still pushing them to get education, so you couldn't get a religious one. They made sure you were going to get some kind of education, and that was, that was a way um, to do it. And there was a lot of enthusiasm during for, uh, all these young people working in factories. You had the you had the wall newspapers, and some of them joined the party that way as well. But let me um, let me skip over, kind of fast forward to 1979, and give you an example of what kind of uh, person the system created. So, my grandparents lived next to a synagogue. How did that happen? Um, my great grandfather had. Uh, he had some land and um, his own house he rented out to as a synagogue and lived with his kids. And um, so that tradition just continued. And by the, by the 1970s, 70s, there really weren't many young or middle-aged people going to the synagogue. I remember as a kid, it was all these you know, old men with crooked backs. It was you know, this Hasidic place. Uh, and you looked at them, they were really products of another era. It was a pretty shabby place, uh, and attendance was very modest, but they could, these, these old Jews could sustain themselves economically several ways. One was, um, one was people gave donations. You know, when, the, the funny thing about Russian Jews is that they were completely unreligious, and they didn't, they didn't do any kind of ritual for births or births, but when people died, everybody wanted yeah. them buried as a Jew. And they, they did this. They did the service, and they gave money to the synagogues. And in your site, I wouldn't say Russians. I would say Ukrainians. Ukrainians, Ukraine, yeah. maybe. In, yeah, in, I in think Russia, it, it did not exist, with the exception of uh, very few. I, I, I have more fingers. Not just my... Ukrainian, Moldovan, Moldovan. Yeah. Right, no, but Russians. but not Russians. She said she said <laughs> Russians. Russian right, Jews Ukrainian. Yeah. Do Ukrainians are different. By and large, I was in Moscow for the first time yeah. last year. Well, not for the first time, but they're it's they're different, different breed of Jews completely. Um, it is very different. Sorry, Moscow has a Jewish section in the cemetery, and that's where all Jews are buried, and it's all Jewish tradition. Like Jewish tradition without the background? I had, in my life, no, I had no, never heard Jews, Jews hiding their okay. backgrounds <laughs> until I came to Moscow. That's fair. I never knew anyone from Ukraine who, who you know, pretended not to not to be one yes, until so I came to Moscow. Yeah. Where did you come from? Where, was your, where, where did your grandfather, I mean, was he still allowed as a, as a member of the party to own land or own that? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. This was... This was you you were allowed to. But I, I, you don't own land. You you you, you have unlimited uh, unlimited lease. You lease from the government. Oh, is that how it works? Unlimited. Yes. They no, no, nobody it. owned land in Soviet Union. Yeah, so how did your grand? How was he able to get to get to actually get a revenue from that shul? Oh, he Soviet. didn't. He didn't. But um, one of his relatives, re she rented it out. Um, I think they. They weren't all taken over by the state. All these. I'll I'll get to no, kind of how I, it was mine. I, I do not. I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't sound right. That, well, he. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you how it works. So the rent the rent was paid under the table 
Oh, okay, okay. Okay, you want to know? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's, like, <laughs> people still rented things out. They just, it was like, you know, it didn't all have to be declared. They, yeah, right, right. but but not not completely. I'll Financial get, improprieties. Um, so so these people they they got uh, money in their um, collection box, but um, and and they had they had a bank account uh, at the local bank. But this account was very, very monitored by the Soviets, but, this, but by the by the party organization there. How, how, how did it? How, how was it monitored? Well, um, when it got any any money they got from, say, your site donations or people coming to do funeral services, they had to put away in this account. And um, if they wanted to use that money for um, for repairing, say, the chairs in the synagogue, they would have to go to the Gakum, and they, ha they would need to ask for this money. And it was always denied them. So you had these old men on these, on these old chairs, and in the middle of services, they'd all fall on their, on their backs because the, the legs kept breaking. And then when the, the money reached about 4,000 rubles, which is, that's actually a lot, somebody from the mayor, the Russian version of the mayor's committee, right, uh, the Gorsevet would come and they would say, oh, you know, you need to make a donation to the cause of world peace or some other such, such nonsense and um, mm -hmm. or the upkeep of monuments and they would, these Jews would basically tax on this money. But who monitored how much money they put in, in into this account? So my mother's history teacher, um, I don't know if I should, this is being taped, so I don't know if I should say his name. Back in town. 